The United States mobilization for World War II was one of the greatest efforts undertaken by the country for any war, before or after. Communities across the country began working together to support the war effort. Cities in the Midwest, like St. Louis and Detroit, saw huge increases in industrial demands for machinery, while places like Pittsburgh worked to meet the ever-increasing demands for steel. While Hampton Roads also underwent this metamorphosis, it was different, it was unique, it forced civilians and sailors to work together toward a common goal. Once home to only a small naval shipyard in Portsmouth, Virginia, by the end of World War II, Hampton Roads was home to the largest naval base in the world, doubling its population between 1940 and 1944. Residency grew from 343,423 to 656,066, a staggering 91% increase. As naval investment increased, job opportunities were abundant at the Newport News and Norfolk shipyards, where during the war over 100 ships were constructed. At its height, the defense industry added over 1,000 jobs a day in Hampton Roads. Thousands of people were employed to build, refit, and upgrade dozens of warships, including battleships, cruisers, and aircraft carriers. A housing crisis erupted beginning in 1939 when the first shipbuilding contracts arrived. Immediately, the area surrounding shipyards overflowed with people and new housing had to be built. In Norfolk, houses were nearly impossible to find. An already unstable market was shaken to its core. New developments near Ward's Corner in downtown Norfolk, undertaken by private investors, were backed up to 90% by the government and allowed to be sold without any down payment to quickly alleviate the shortage. In neighboring Newport News, it was hard to find even a room to rent. Portsmouth, too, faced shortages, which required federal action. 1.7 million sailors, soldiers, and airmen embarked from Hampton Roads between 1942 and 1945. While Navy uniforms had been a common sight before 1940, by 1941 they were ubiquitous with the city as sailors lined up along Granby Street. Vice ran rampant as soldiers and sailors alike tried to get their last taste of freedom before being sent abroad. In 1940, Norfolk police allowed all manner of entertainment along East Main Street, but as the war progressed, the Navy increasingly sought to control the recreation of service members in the city. At Naval Station Norfolk, new initiatives were created to bring baseball to the forefront of sailor leisure time. The athletic field at the Naval Station was turned into a baseball complex, with hopes to host large events and boost morale. The new facility was named McClure Field after the station's commander, Captain Henry McClure. Naval Station Norfolk, first opened in 1917, expanded its role as a training center as the Navy began to advance training operations preparing men to go directly into the fleet. In nearby Virginia Beach, new runways and hangars were built for the growing naval air wing. Still, despite the adversity many residents now faced as the wartime economy began to set in, the city's residents supported the war effort in every way that they could. Marvin Schlegel, a resident of Norfolk during the war, explained that the city's story was one of how the city and the Navy learned to work in double harness. War bond drives were constantly advertised in the Virginian Pilot and Norfolk Dispatch newspapers. Across several drives hosted at the Lowe's Theater on Granby Street, thousands of dollars were raised in support of the war. Similar amounts of money were raised across dozens of dances hosted by the YWCA. In fair weather, bond drives would bring sailors and community members downtown together, where they would enjoy each other's company as they raised money for the war efforts. Even children became involved in the efforts as schools like Lee School in Ghent engaged in scrap paper drives and others, like the elementary school in Bayview, planted their victory gardens and tended to them. In the Freemason neighborhood near downtown, one family's children helped their father's company distribute sand when fears of bombing raids increased during the height of the war. Hampton Roads' response to the war showed the adaptability of the American people and a national spirit devoted to victory. As the need for wartime materials increased, so too did the determination and grit of Americans on the home front who supported the ongoing efforts in the Pacific and Europe. Learn more about the Hampton Roads during World War II, its mobilization and transformation from our other videos in this series.